So in this last video before deployment, we'll be adding a database to our application. We'll use SQLite to populate data on the hello.html page. Now, if you're used to working with databases already, you should have no problem following this tutorial. However, there is some added complexity for outputting the data to an HTML page, so I decided to show you one of the simplest approaches for implementing a database within Flask. Okay, so let's go and start by creating the database itself. And I already have a script here built, which will create and then populate the database. You can see that the database is going to be called sales. The table is reps. The fields are rep name and amount. And then here's the data up here. So let's go ahead and run this. Python sales.py. I didn't get any errors, I just want to make sure that the data did populate. So I'm going to pull up the SQLite, SQLite database browser. There's our database. Reps, rep name, amount. Let's browse the data. And there is all the data. Okay, cool. So that created. Now we need to go ahead and make some changes to the routes.py file. So first, I'm going to import the SQLite library. And then I'm going to define the database. So this from object looks at the configuration information, which for now is just the database, and imports the variables into the, the application. So it's a good idea to use a separate file to store your configuration information. And you can store the database, you can also store the secret key, you could store any um, usernames or passwords that you're using. So it's just a good idea to keep that away from your application just for security purposes. Okay, next we're gonna create a function that allows us to easily connect to the database. Find connect db. This is where our database variable goes. So now we're going to actually execute the SQL commands within the hello function itself. So let's scroll down here. So first we need to connect to the database. And now we're going to query the database for the information that we need. to select rep name and amount from sales. And then we want to return the data to a dictionary, which will be assigned to the variable name sales. So sales equals then we're going to set rep name equal to row zero and then amount is equal to row one is four row and curse dot fetch all so fetch all pulls and stores all the data that is obtained from this select statement See so typo there. There we go. Close that out there. And let's go and close the database. And now we need to pass the variable sales to hello.html. 
All right, so that is it for the routes.py file. And now we need to make some changes to the hello file. Just for time's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this over. I'm gonna go ahead and overwrite all this here. So basically what I did is I moved the logout link up a little bit. So now we have a title, it says sales data region one. And then you can see here we have um, what looks like is very similar to a for loop in Python. So for item and names and should actually be sales. That's right. Okay. Okay. Got a little confused there. Okay. So let's go and test this out and make sure it works. So I'm going to fire up the server. And we're getting the syntax error routes line 15. Let's see what that's about. Okay, I didn't close this out. Okay. Let's try this one more time. Okay, it's running. So let me go ahead and log in. And okay, getting another error. Let's see what this is. No such table sales. Okay, that's because I called the table reps, I believe. Yeah, it's sales.db and the table is reps. So let me go in here and change that. So select your name from reps. Okay. Try this again. All right, so here is the sales data, and let me actually put a, a uh, break in there that each new row is populated on a new line. And so let me just go ahead and refresh this. Okay, there we go. A little bit easier to read. Got a spelling error there, as usual, and it looks okay. Not perfect, but it looks good. So as I said before, this is just obviously a very simple way of implement, implementing a database within SQLite. You can read some of the changes that I would make in the online tutorial found again at Real Python for the web. And that link is just in this video's description. Okay, so next time I'll be showing you how to deploy this application to the web. Thanks for watching.